has beautiful hair, a pretty face, the tail of a fish, and looks like a mermaid, but isn't a mermaid? The answer, a picture of a mermaid, of course. <laughs> Anyways, if you clicked on the thumbnail and didn't sleep through the first 15 seconds of this video, you would have realized by this point that in this video, I am taking on a draw this in your style challenge from Instagram user Dream Pikmin. It is basically an, an art challenge that's popular on Instagram whereby one artist shares their artwork with the hashtag draw this in your style or hashtag DTIYS and other artists draw that artwork but in their own style basically reimagining it and putting their own twist on it sometimes even using a different medium i was really drawn get it to this mermaid because it's valentine's day team and yes like i said in my previous videos i am making sure every video released up till valentine's day is valentine's day team so if you're into that hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out Oh, I forgot, I'm supposed to be talking about what I'm doing. By the way, I'm trying out a different way of capturing the speed paint. Previously, I would use the time-lapse video as captured in Procreate, but this time I recorded it on camera instead so you can see what I'm actually doing and how I'm doing it. You can see that I've already deviated from the original artwork by letting some of the mermaid's hair down, which is fine because that's part of what this draw this in your style challenge is about. Creativity, artistic license, expressing your own style. Well, the reason here I let her hair down also is because the pose I drew is slightly different from the original artwork and I felt that the pose I chose somehow looked a little stiff, so I needed those flowing lines to distract the eye a bit. Then you can see I went even further with that concept. Basically, I fixed that stiff pose the way Kardashians fix their relationship problems. That is to say, not fixing it and just splashing a whole lot of drama all over it. This reminds me of the art projects I did growing up. See, I used to make a lot of posters when I was a child, but I was really bad at lettering them because I'm left-handed. What happened was that every time I wrote something in ink, my left hand would smudge what I was writing because of course you write from the left to the right and... Do I, do I really need to explain this concept? Well, to cut that long-winded explanation short, my posters would always end up ruined by smudgy letters. And being the little genius I was, I only lettered my posters after I had already completed the artwork. So after spending hours upon hours painstakingly drawing, I would then ruin the whole project with smeared inky letters. I eventually devised a solution to this problem by writing from right to left. Yes, I'm very clever, thank you. But that did not make for very pretty handwriting. Wait, why am I telling you a story? Something about covering mistakes. Oh, oh, right. I came up with another genius solution, if I do say so myself, whereby every time I made this sort of mistake, I would just cover it with butterflies. I would be like, oops, I smudge ink here. Never mind, I will draw a little butterfly over it. Oops, another mistake, another butterfly. The drawback to this solution was that it led to people thinking I liked butterflies. It would be, oh, your posters always look so pretty because especially if the butterflies, you know, it'd be thanks for not noticing my mistakes. So life lesson, when you make mistakes, cover it up and pretend they never happened. No, 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 wait, that sounds like terrible advice. Um, when you make mistakes, acknowledge them and improve upon them with butterflies. Wait, that doesn't sound right. I forgot to talk about what I'm doing again. Here you can see that I'm at the inking stage. My favorite brush for the inking step is Syrup. I'm just letting you know if you were politely curious about it. You can see that I've added a layer of white over the sketchy layer, layer and then I reduced the opacity so I could still see my sketches through it. Uh, this is for creating a sort of clean canvas for my inking layer. Oh, here you can see that I have flipped it horizontally so that I can just check that everything looks doesn't look too weird. So I'm basically just fixing all the little mistakes, flicking, flipping it back and forth, making sure that everything looks right. Don't worry too much about the lack of pupils. I'll be adding them in at the end. I initially did consider leaving her without pupils so that the visual impact would be that oh, this mermaid is using magic, uh, she's transforming. So yeah, while I was drawing this mermaid over several hours, I became rather invested in her and I started creating an excuse, I mean, a well thought out reason for all those flashy waves surrounding her. They're not to hide anything, just saying. 
Anyway, mermaids have a magical, mythical quality to them, so I thought it wouldn't be too far-fetched to think of this mermaid having magical powers. So for this one, I figured, oh, with all that water swirling around her, obviously she's going, undergoing a magical transformation. She's a shape-shifting mermaid. I mean, she has pink hair done in a super trendy style. I don't think she was born that way. Obviously, she's a mermaid who keeps up with what's hot, so she's giving herself a Valentine's Day look with pink hair and two buns in the shape of hearts, a pink tail, etc, etc, etc. I mean, look at her. Obviously, she has magical shape-shifting powers. I mean, that figure is unreal. Anyways, yeah, if I had shape-shifting powers, I would be changing my look every day and just go wild with it. Not using it for evil, but you know, just for aesthetics. No wait, if I had shape shooting powers, I would release YouTube videos and TikToks and show off those powers and pretend it was all special effects and make bank. I digress. Anyways, here you can see that I am cleaning up all the inking, making sure that the lines are exactly where I want them to be. There's not much I can talk about here because it's all just fixing those little details and making sure the lines are clean, the curves are slick. I feel that most of the time what elevates, you know, mediocre or subpar art to something that looks somewhat decent is taking care of all these little things and making sure the finished product looks sharp. Right now what I'm doing is putting in these little lines as a way of adding visual interest and texture. The inspiration for this is from woodcuts. If you watched my previous speed paint video with the cosmic lovers, the man in the moon and the starry lady, you would know that this is a style that I adore. Somehow combining something that inspires no nostalgia like woodcuts with the clean modern lines afforded by digital art just really melts my cold little heart. Alright, I don't really have much to add at this point, so I'm going to take a break on doing the voiceover for now. So let your ears take a rest and let your eyes feast on the creative process.
here, I just want to explain that for some reason my camera stopped recording at this part so I'm just inserting in the time lapse as captured by Procreate to show you what I was doing with the waves. I was adding some white for the froth and some dark green for some added depth. And then I added in a little bit of texture in the background, just a bit of texture, just a bit of visual interest. And here my camera was working again. So now I was working on the fin. I'm quite proud of the fact that I had the presence of mind to remember that, oh, it's a fish fin. It should be transparent. So I made sure it was on a different layer and reduced the opacity so you could see through it. I'm adding in all those little lines and adding a bit of shine there. I'm quite proud of the fish fin. Oh, and here I am adding in the heart outline, making sure that every pixel is where I want it to be. I am quite proud of how this um, drawing turned out. I really enjoyed doing this draw this in your style challenge. I thought it was a really fun challenge. It got me out of a rut. I didn't have to think about what I was drawing, but instead more of how I wanted to present the subject matter. Oh, here you can see that I am adding in some more shading to the hair and making sure that there is a lot of um, contrast as well as adding in a little bit of highlights and some last minute adjustments. Oh, here you can see that I was experimenting with the eyes but in the end I decided I didn't like how it looked so I decided to, so I just put in the pupils like I mentioned at the beginning of the video. But I made sure that those white strands were connected to the highlight in her pupils just to give it the hint that, oh, um, she's doing something magical. I really like the expression on her face. It was really cheeky, very sassy. Overall, I really enjoyed doing this. Finally, we have the grand reveal. First, I want to say thanks so much to Dream Pigment for this challenge. I will link to his website and his YouTube channel below. Here you can see the original art and my take on it side by side. I love how it turned out and I hope you enjoyed watching it. Thanks so much for tuning in guys. I will see you next time. Have a great week ahead. Bye!